boosting. We're going to look at the concept of weak and strong learners and see that many weak can become strong as long as they do so by voting. Let me give you an introductory example. This is actually an example I do when I give talks. I pass these uh, collections of faces out and this is the true data or gold standard and I have ten faces and the first one is sad and the second one is happy and the third one is sad, the fourth one is sad, the fifth one is happy, the sixth one is happy, the seventh one is sad, the eighth one is happy, the ninth one is happy, and the tenth one is sad. And I'm going to say one if we have happy and zero if we have sad. So that's our classifier. Now let's suppose we had people rate these just looking at them and say well I think it's this. We're going to do this with nine learners who are going to ask, be asked to classify these faces as either happy or sad. So let's look at our first learner. So this is what he rated. One happy, two happy, three happy. As a matter of fact, he rated everybody as happy except the last one he says is sad. Everybody else is happy. So optimistic guy. So that means he put a one and then a one, 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 then a one. And the last one he said, well, they can't all be happy, so that one must be zero. So notice he got an accuracy of 0 0.6 because he missed the first one. The second one's right. He missed the third one. He missed the fourth one. He got the uh, fifth one. And he missed the seventh one, and he got the rest right. So that's 6 out of 10, or an accuracy of 0 0.6. Now, we had another guy that came in, and he said, well, the first one looks sad to me, but everybody else looks happy. So, how did he do? Well, he got the first one right, got the second one right, missed the third, missed the fourth, and missed the seventh, and missed the last. So he's also got 0 0.6. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and show the data for the 9 here, where... Uh, green means they got it right and red means they got it wrong. So the first two had accuracies of 0 0.6, the third one 0 0.6, the fourth one 0 0.6. And of course I contrived this example. Uh, so the first seven all have an accuracy of 0 0.6 and then the last two have an accuracy of 0 0.5. So these are all pretty weak classifiers. They really don't know who's happy and who's sad in these faces. However, let's look at what would happen if we took all the classifiers, all nine classifiers together. And what we're going to do is we're going to write these down in pairs. The first number are going to be those who vote for it being a zero, sad, and the second who vote for it being a one, which is happy. So in the first column, the nine was a vote of six sad and three happy so therefore the majority vote is that this is sad and that's correct the second one we have five that vote happy and four that vote sad so therefore the majority vote is happy and that's correct and then five to four for sad and that's correct and five to four for sad and that's correct and 4 to 5 for happy and that's correct and again 4 to 5 for happy and that's correct and then 5 to 4 for sad and that's correct and lo and behold we have a perfect classifier 1.0 by using a voting scheme with all nine classifiers who individually are weak using them together so why did this work well one of the reasons it worked is because the weak learners were wrong in a wide variety of ways. So we can look at this uh, to, uh, in some sense by saying let's suppose that we have some hypothetical set of data that we partition into three parts. And let's suppose classifier 1, we have three classifiers. On the first partition, classifier 1 is wrong, the classifiers 2 and 3 are right. In the second partition, classifier 1 is right, classifier 3 is right, but classifier 2 is wrong, and then in the third, 1 and 2 are right and 3 is wrong. Well, what does that mean? 
That means individually they each had an accuracy of 0 0.66, 2 out of 3. But corporately, their voting scheme would lead to perfection. They'd always vote 2 to 1 for the right classification. In other words, their errors are independent. And they all participated equally. So we're going to look at what's called boosting. Boosting is a voting scheme which we can use when we have multiple classifiers. So our training data is going to be bold T sub I, C sub I. Uh, T sub I are the features used to predict the class C sub I. Notice we're going to make a change because positives we're going to say are in class 1, but negatives are going to be in class negative 1. So the C sub I are going to be in negative 1, 1. Uh, one or the other of those. So we have uh, R classifiers. Uh, actually, I've got V classifiers. V1 to capital V. And each classifier is going to vote either a plus or a minus 1 as a prediction of the class of T sub I. So y sub v of t sub i is a plus or a minus 1. Now the reason for using plus or minus 1 is voting then is just summation. So when you add up the pluses and minus 1's, then if there's more negative 1's, it's a negative, and if there's more positive 1's, it's positive. Therefore the sign can be used to as the prediction. So if the vote is for the i-th uh, training set of features is positive will predict class 1. If it's negative we'll predict it's in the other class that's in the negatives. Now there are still some issues here because random classifiers could lead to the sign of the vote also being random because you could see where if the we added plus and minus ones at random then we could completely destroy the voting scheme. So what we do is we generalize the voting scheme so that each classifier or voter has some weight alpha sub v so the vote is now the sum little v equals 1 to capital V alpha sub v y sub v of the feature t sub i so that's the vote for the i -th class of the feature and once again these uh, y sub v's are going to either be a negative one or a positive one now the terminology here is each y sub v is what's known as a weak learner whereas voting is a strong learner notice I wrote y strong of x is the sign which is either one if it's positive or negative one if it's negative of the sum v equals one to v alpha sub v y sub v of x so our goal is to combine weak learners into a strong learner and that means that the weights alpha should be should be related to the training errors and we really want weak learners to have independent errors given that we have this goal how do we select the learners and the weights well we're going to look at what's called exponential loss now zero one loss is actually sufficient but the zero one loss function is a step function. We go from 1, we drop down to 0. So we approximate it with an exponential. Now this is an extremely crude uh, approximation, but the exponential is differentiable and we'll need that later on. And boosting is going to minimize the error on the ith observation in the training set. So e sub i will be e to the negative c sub i y strong of t sub i. That's going to be our uh, exponential loss function uh, for the individual eyes. And now let's add up everything in the training set so we get the total error, the total exponential loss is i equals 1 to capital T e to the negative c sub i y strong of t sub i. So the key is we want to implement this dynamically. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've already picked y1 up to y sub m minus 1 and we already know the weights alpha sub 1 up to alpha sub m minus 1. So what we want to do is we want to find, given that we know the 1 up to m minus 1's, we want to find the mth learner weight pair. So we let f sub m minus 1 of x 
be the linear combination alpha 1 y sub 1 of x up to alpha sub m minus 1 y of m minus 1 of x. Then we can write our loss function, the y strong to this point is going to be the f sub m minus 1 of t sub j plus alpha sub m y sub m of t sub j. I'm sorry, that's a t sub i. So our loss function is i equals 1 to capital T e to the negative c sub i f sub m minus 1 capital or bold t sub i plus alpha sub m y sub m t sub i. And notice that the function f we already know that because that's in terms of the known alphas and y's up to m minus 1. So our goal is to figure out what the mth alpha sub m y sub m should be. So here's how we do it. If we look at the loss function, we can expand by multiplying the negative c sub i to both parts. And then we can write that as the sum i equals 1 to t, e to the negative c sub i f sub m of t sub i, times another exponential, e to the negative c sub i alpha sub m y sub m of both t sub i. And we let w sub i m be e to the negative c sub i f of m minus 1 t sub i. So we know what those are. So the w sub i m come from the m minus 1 uh, uh, step. So e is the sum of the w by sub m, uh, uh, the error e, it, times the exponential of negative c sub i alpha sub m y sub m of t sub i. And notice we can write this sum, uh, i equals 1 to t of w by sub m e to the negative c sub i alpha sub m y sub m t sub i. The c's and the y's are either 1 or negative 1. So where they're equal, their product will be uh, 1, and we'll get e to the negative alpha sub m. So our total exponential loss is e to the negative alpha sub m times the sum over those i's where c sub i is equal to y sub m of t sub i of the weights w sub i comma m plus e to the alpha sub m uh, times the sum over the j's where the c sub j and the y sub m of t sub j are different uh, because then the product will have a negative sign negative times negative is positive. Now let chi of a condition be 1 if the condition is true and 0 otherwise. So we want to look at c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i. And when that happens then the chi of the condition c sub i not equal to y sub m t sub i is equal to 1. And chi of the equality is equal to 0. If c sub i is equal to y sub m of t sub i, then that condition implies that 1 minus chi of the c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i is equal to 1, because the chi would be 0 and 1 minus 0 would be 1. So therefore, I can write my total exponential loss in terms of these two sums. I can change the sums to e to the alpha sub m i equals 1 to t, w of i comma m, and then chi of c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i, plus e to the negative alpha sub m, the sum i equals 1 to t, w sub i m, times the quantity 1 minus chi of c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i. So we've switched the order here, but we've now stated everything in terms of c sub i not being the same as the prediction y sub m of t sub i. So starting with that we can expand and notice that we'll get the sum e to the alpha sub m minus e to the negative alpha sub m that quantity times the sum i equals 1 to t w of i sub m times chi of c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i plus an additional term e to the negative alpha sub m i equals 1 to n t of the w sub i comma m. So what we have here is actually uh, summing over all the training set and using the chi to pick out those that correspond to the different classes 
and then we've rewritten the exponential loss in terms of this chi of uh, the prediction not being the same as the actual. This final term is constant with respect to the y sub m. There's no y sub m in that final term. And we want to assume that all the alphas are strictly positive. Otherwise, if we had negatives, then they would flip the sign of the associated learner. And, and we don't want to do that. So we want the learners are voting with their sign, so all the alphas should be strictly positive. And that means that the difference of these two exponentials, e to the alpha sub m minus e to the negative alpha sub m, is strictly positive if alpha sub m is greater than zero. And therefore the best y sub m is the one that minimizes the sum i equals 1 to capital T w sub i comma m uh, chi of c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i. So let epsilon sub m be this sum i equals 1 to t w sub i comma m chi of c sub i not equal to y sub m of t sub i. Then our total exponential loss is e to the alpha sub m times epsilon sub m plus e to the negative alpha sub m times 1 minus epsilon sub m. So the minimum in terms of alpha sub m, the, the smallest value of e as a function of alpha sub m occurs when alpha sub m is 1 half the natural log of the fraction 1 minus epsilon sub m over epsilon sub m. Now what we've just derived is what's known as eta boost. And eta boost tells us how to make weak learners into a strong learner. The way it works is we assume we've already chosen m minus 1. We've already done the eta boost for m minus 1. So we choose the next learner. We've picked the one that has the smallest epsilon sub m uh, weighted uh, 0, 1 loss is what that epsilon sub m is called. And then we calculate the alpha sub m and then we go to the next step. And so we can proceed iteratively and come up with a scheme that keeps boosting the performance of each previous classifier. And so what you can say then is which metal, uh, which model is the best? Uh, all of them. Even the weakest learners can contribute. We can use every tree from every repetition of a validation step. We can use every k nearest neighbor from every re repetition of a validation step. Uh, we can choose the best tree and then boost with the rest using the eta boost. But notice that we need independent errors and eta boost works best if all the different weak learners are wrong in different ways. And in validation based boosting, where we're just re-randomizing the training set each time, the errors occur in pretty much the same way for each validation step. So we need to be a little more sophisticated. So tend to use what's called bagging, uh, bootstrap aggregation, or what's known as the random subspace method. And that simply means we use random subsets of the features. We can use mutual information to avoid extremely weak learners. For example, we would never want to use gender plus age to predict eye color because gender and age are completely independent of eye color. Uh, at least I'm assuming that and therefore their mutual information would be zero and so we could avoid that pair. Uh, and we can use the AIC criterion to choose what the best model to begin with is. So we should never use only one algorithm. Boosting many weak learners is better than a single parameter tweaking approach. A neural network is itself in many ways a boosting algorithm using weighted voting. I won't go into that now, but just go back and look at what the uh, universal, uh, the, the theorem for the universal classifier looks like. Uh, but don't expect miracles. Complex data often leads to most classifiers making the same mistakes repeatedly. And boosting only helps if you've got at least one learner who has discovered something that the others haven't discovered, even if they know what they've got only very weakly.